Got him. There we go. Sight fish that red, guys. Woo, right there on the jerk shad. Man, pretty one right here. Hey, what's going on, Salt Strong Nation? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over how to sight cast specifically to redfish. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first tip I have for you today concerning how to sight cast for redfish is going to be figuring out what is the direction and what is the speed of that fish. This is a very important element that a lot of anglers leave out. They just see the fish and they immediately want to cast to it. But if you're not tracking exactly where that fish is going, whether it's going across a big flat or even a bank line, it can really hem you up when it comes to getting the right presentation in front of the fish. Now, the speed is going to be really important as well. If the fish is moving a little bit slower, you might want to go ahead and lead that fish a little bit more because you would probably rather your lure to be in front of that fish before it gets to it already at a dead standstill. So making sure that you can kind of judge and put your lure exactly where it needs to be as that fish is going down the bank or across the flat is very, very important. However, if that fish is moving a little bit faster, yeah, you wanna lead it a little bit more sometimes just to make sure your lure can get in front of it and not spook them. However, I've noticed when those fish are moving a little bit faster, they're much more reactionary. So what I mean by that is they might be going down a bank line and sometimes it could be two, three, or even four fish all pushing bait at the same time and hunting. Those fish are hungry and wanting to eat. So they're a little bit more aggressive and I'm typically not as worried about spooking those fish with my lure compared to one that's just kind of meandering along the bank or just cruising along a flat looking for something to jump up and flee from it. So if you can get those two critical elements, one, making sure you know exactly what direction that fish is going in, and two, recognizing the speed of that fish, it will definitely set you up on where you want to throw or present your lure to that specific fish. Okay, so now that we know when and where to place our lure or bait, depending on the speed and direction of that fish, let's get into how to retrieve your lure or bait for that specific fish. So guys, again, the speed is gonna be a very important factor determining on how I'm gonna retrieve and also what lure I'm gonna use. So when those fish are moving a little bit faster, that's when they're a little bit more aggressive and I'm not personally worried about spooking them near as much compared to if they're moving a little bit slower. So that's when I'm gonna use something like this right here, which is gonna be a paddle tail, guys. This is gonna be our gold digger. Phenomenal color, it's one of my favorites to use here in the southeast and in kind of murkier water and conditions. However, this paddle tail is one, it's not gonna land super hard, but it's got a little bit extra vibration on it with that tail, and you can land it a little bit closer to those fish since they're moving faster, and a lot of times they're gonna pick it up because those fish are looking for something, anything really that's going to try and be fleeing or getting away from them. And you want to make sure that that lure is going to get noticed because they are moving pretty quick. They're getting used to scattering, you know, shrimp, crabs, crustaceans, even bait fish. So you want to make sure that your lure is getting noticed. And that's why I really like using a paddle tail for that type of scenario. So now getting into that fish that's kind of meandering or moving a little bit more slow and deliberate, that's when I really like using more of a jerk shad presentation. Something like this right here, this is just our five inch slam shady jerk. It imitates a shrimp and even a crab a little bit if you kind of drag it. So this is a lot more of a subtle presentation. And one of the reasons I really like it as well is when you throw this out there, it doesn't have a big paddle tail here on the back. So it lands a lot softer in the water, not spooking those fish, moving a little bit slower and more deliberate. Now my favorite thing to do when sight fishing with these type of lures is really going ahead and throwing this out there, sometimes even four, five, six, seven feet, uh, depending on the water clarity, to go ahead and get this in position to where it's right in the line of sight of those fish. Now once you have it out there, it's always a little bit easier to throw further ahead of the fish because you then as the angler have more time to react and kind of move it in front of that fish's dinner plate. So once that happens guys and that fish gets close enough and you can kind of see where the two are about the intersect really the retrieve that I use is very very simple and I do a quick just little pop or a bump or I do it twice both work I've used them quite a bit and they both seem to work really well but the main thing that you want to do is make sure that this is going away or laterally from the fish you do not want this to go back towards the fish if that happens nine times out of ten it's going to spook that fish and he's not going to eat your presentation 
So going ahead and making sure that it's going either laterally away from the fish or kind of coming back towards you at a 45 degree angle or so, that's typically your best bet. You just want to make sure that it's not going to go back towards the fish because in nature that doesn't happen. A shrimp or crab, any type of crustacean that they're looking for is going to be moving away from them generally. So you want to make sure that you do that as well so you can get more hookups. And just one more thing to add on these retrieves as well, guys don't be too aggressive with it. If these fish are just being slow and deliberate, you don't want a huge movement that's gonna move this you know, a foot or more. A lot of times, you can see it in some of the catch footage I just went over, it's gonna be a very small bump or even two quick bumps, and that's all it is. All you're trying to do is get the attention of that fish to look like it's something that's fleeing away from them, but still an easy meal. And if you can do that and it's going in the right direction and you time it right when that fish is going in front of this lure, you should hook up. All right guys, so hopefully these tips were helpful when it comes to sight casting for redfish. If you wanna check out any of the lures that we talked about today, such as the Jerk Shad or even the 2.0 and the Gold Digger color, be sure to check them out at fishstrong.com. And if there's anything that you like to do when sight casting to redfish, definitely be sure to leave them in the comments below or any questions that you have and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're new to Salt Strong, just know we're the number one online fishing club out there because we actually guarantee we're gonna help you catch more fish not only with tips and in-depth courses, but also our new Smart Fishing Spots app that actually tells you exactly where the fish will be feeding as well as the best times of day to fish there. You also save tons of money with tackle discounts and make tons of new fishing friends in the Insider community. So thanks again for watching and we hope to see you in the Insider community soon.